Where did he go? Here, here. So this is the Emperor Scorpion. Join me, Mike Clarkson, on Zilla's one-of-a-kind adventure care series, Beyond the Glass, as we study the wild relatives of our captive bred pets in order to better understand how to care for them. Let's go Beyond the Glass. We're here in the forests, just below the Kloto Mountains in West Africa, on the hunt for one very popular emperor, the Emperor Scorpion. Now, Emperor Scorpions are nocturnal, but the sun sets pretty quick in the mountains, and a lot of cool creatures come out at dusk. So with that said, enough talking, let's get to herping while there's still a little bit of daylight. I have to admit, I love the mountains. This might be my favorite biome in West Africa so far. In these mountains, once you get some elevation, you get moisture and suddenly it's like tropics surrounded by just seas of grassland. It makes for some really cool diversification. Whoa, <laughs> that's not a rock. It's okay, little guy. This is Holmes Hingeback Tortoise. This is one unique animal. Look at this camouflage. I mean, it looks like a leaf. Really, really cool. It's kind of an interesting shell adaptation that it seals up completely in the back, but it's kind of open in the front. You do get these actually in the States pretty often. And I think a lot of people keep all tortoises the same, just kind of dry as if it's a sulcata. But obviously look around. This is not a sulcata. This is not sulcata habitat. This is definitely a tortoise that's gonna need some moisture. They need that. They need water, terrain, UV, and leaf litter. Well, I was hoping he'd come out and greet us, but I don't think that's gonna happen. I can understand that. I'm one big, hairy, loud primate that won't shut up, and he just wants to get back to finishing up his day, so I'll let him do that. So right now, the sun has just gone over the horizon and you can hear the birds kind of giving their good night chirps. It's always sunrise and sunset when the birds go off and now the frogs are coming out and the chorus of the jungle is starting to shift from daytime animals to nocturnal animals. You can hear the crickets coming out, night's approaching and that's when we're gonna find the emperor scorpion. Got it, got it, got it, got it. Okay. So this is the forest banded gecko. Look at this guy. He is just shiny golden excellence. He's probably the boss around here. He's got a couple battle wounds on him. You could tell he's been defending this territory for some time. What a awesome, beautiful gecko. No relation to the banded geckos in the United States in the genus Coleonyx. These guys are true arboreal geckos. They inhabit trees, cliffs, rocks. At night, you'll see them on the crawl, but during the day, they're gonna be crammed into crevices. Now, this species goes through an ontogenetic change. What that means is they look different when they're young, and as they mature, they change pattern and color. Now, this is an exceptional specimen because only about 10% actually gets this brilliant yellow color. The rest can be much more drab. So I guess that means we're lucky. They're littlest geckos. That means they've got no eyelids, they gotta lick their eyeballs to keep them clean. They can lose their tails, and unlike some gecko species, they do regenerate. This guy's been a really good sport, he's been totally chill, and uh, I think after the sudden approach, I gotta give him four stars for attitude. I'm gonna put him back on his tree so he can return to being the king of his domain. After a fruitless night of scorpion hunting, we decided to call in our ringer, Fufu, to help us track down this giant arachnid. Fufu tells me he actually sees more up at the top of the hill, yeah? Yes. Hopefully, we find the emperor scorpion, because I'm just not ready to give up on the king of this hill. So, let's go. We're now out of the forest. We've gone to a cassava field, a cornfield, and hopefully, at the end of all this, we'll be at Emperor Scorpion Habitat. 
if myself or any of us don't collapse first. It's crazy the amount of work that goes into finding emperor scorpions. You wouldn't think, but I've like sweat out four Gatorades already and they don't even sell a Gatorade here. I would have not expected this one to be so hard. Pepper scorpion. It's like a $20 scorpion. How hard could it be? Apparently the answer to how hard could it be is really flipping hard. Where did he go? Uh, go get it. Here, here. Yeah. Awesome. Check it out. So this is the Emperor Scorpion. Probably the most popular pet scorpion in the entire pet hobby. And you can see why. They're big, they're impressive, and they're pretty gentle. They're also really easy to keep. Nice work. Good find, man. So, you know, as a general rule of thumb, if a scorpion's got a really big pincher and a disproportionately small stinger, in layman's terms, it's probably not the most dangerous thing in the world. But remember, that's just a rule of thumb, so always do your research first. Now, there is currently a ban on importation of emperor scorpions, so they're not quite as readily available as they used to be. Hopefully people start captive breeding them, but in the meantime, they're getting a little hard to find. I totally thought we'd find them in the forest, in a lush green area. It's what you picture, but sometimes what you have in your mind just isn't reality. All right, well this guy's exploring every which way of my shirt. You coming up to say hi? Well, this here emperor is certainly the king of this hill but he's given us a royal run for our money. That's enough punts for this one. I'm gonna put him back and take our readings. All right, let's take our measurements. So you got a temp out here in the low 80s, and I can imagine that they can probably handle a little cooler and the rock provides thermal regulation. It probably keeps it cooler during the day and warmer at night. But of course, they do have the option to dry off. So I wouldn't keep them super humid, but I also wouldn't keep them super dry. He sees a bug he might eat for us. <laughs> Always keep scorpions in an area with good airflow. If it gets really stagnant air, the chances of mold, fungus, or bad molds goes way up. So make sure you have ventilation when keeping emperor scorpions. It rains a lot here, so they have water pretty often. I would keep them with a continuous source of water. So a water bowl, a really tight shelter, substrate that retains some moisture but is not actually super wet, and a high 70s, low 80s temperature range, and you should be ready to have a king of your own. All right, now to hike back down this hill. And by hill, I mean an entire freaking mountain. 